and Amanda Burrs. Thank you very much. Very with Children of Darcy's. Amazing. Some things never change. Me too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Me too. Okay. Oh, wow. I All told right. you we couldn't make this show today. No. Uh, yeah, there you go. Wow. Well, there you go. We, we've got that question out of the way already. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. First, let me just say on behalf of everybody here, uh, thank you both so much for uh, taking the time out of both your busy schedules to come out and join us here in Niagara Falls, Canada. My pleasure. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here and I'm, I'm just so impressed with everybody who's come up and said hey. And Yeah, a lot, uh, most of you have. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah. And if you haven't, you, we can continue the conversation. Yeah, we'll try to put you to sleep right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Amazing. So like I said earlier before we got started, uh, there's so many of you guys here and you all have so many great questions. I'm not going to take up any of, uh, of their time with my questions. So what I will do is I'm going to put it right out to you guys right now. Um, no pressure. No, a ton of pressure. Get this right, and or I, you have to join no ma'am. As and only inappropriate questions. Remember, that's what I ask for every, from everybody. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so come on up. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. Now you come first, and you're next. All right, my friend. Hi. Oh, hello. Now it's on. There we go. Love your shirt. <laughs> Love your shirt, by the way. <laughs> Just wanted to find out, uh, what were your favorite scenes together? Great question. Wow. Great question. Favorite scenes together. You know, I remember we were in the hot tub together. Yeah, and that the, was and, fantastic. And that, that wasn't one of my favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I can think of those. I can think of the bad. No. Well, no I, we had fault. a great scene together when David was there. Steve, yes. the character Steve, was in bed with us. That was yes. funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I enjoyed where that Where we immensely. woke up and he was there. It was like, what? Uh, but I would say one of my favorites was we did a special that nobody saw, the, the one in England. Anybody see that one? Right, yeah. Yep. It was three episodes when we got a free trip. Yeah. Those were some of my favorites. And we had a, we, there was an actual S&M club that worked all night and then we went in to start filming it. Smelled like so good. Six in the morning. <laughs> just saying. We just went. <gasps> Six in the morning, we show up to film, and they're just there are people just now leaving the club, <laughs> and it was quite an experience. But that was fun stuff. Like also, we, yeah, yeah, your outfit was a little less humiliating, but <laughs> oh, no, debatable. but those were fun shows because Ted and I really had our own storyline. If you saw mm -hmm. those episodes, and we didn't have to work nearly as as much yeah. as the rest of the cast, and so we got to run off and play in England. But I yeah. liked our storyline. Yeah. I remember the big red bus, the the British bus. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. We tour around, but we were and, like tourists. I think we got blown up in an elevator or something. That too. was yeah, what yeah. I loved. Yeah, we yeah. blew up. And in fact, yeah. I still have that photo on my refrigerator at home. Do you of really? Of us with our hair sticking Do you straight really? up. Yeah. He's lying. He's well, totally my wife lying. has it on the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad enough he's that good looking. He's got to be a good guy, too, on top of that, right? <laughs> no, no. My wife put it up. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got another question there. All right. Come on up, and I got you next, my friend. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Elvis. How are you doing? Um, first question is for Amanda. Uh, what was it like doing Fright Night? It was one of my favorite movies of all time, and your character of Amy Peterson was just amazing, especially after they put the teeth on you and everything. Well, that took six hours in the chair, <laughs> but I only had to do it a couple of times, as I've mentioned to a few of you guys. Fright Night was a, an awesome experience. I was just this young baby actor, and so was William Ragsdale and Stephen Jeffries. Actually, Stephen and I had just done another movie together, and we're finishing that movie, and, and I said, so what, what are you up to after this? And he's like, yeah, well, I'm making this little um, horror movie called Fright Night. I said, me too. So we had no <laughs> idea that we went from one film to the next. But it was pretty magical, but the, the biggest magical part of it is that it still 
cheers up people today, scares them and they enjoy it and it's gone generational. And we had no idea that that was going to happen, so. Well, I said this to Chris last year, that movie inspired me to become the filmmaker, which I am now, wow. so. Well, Thanks. that's Tom Holland. That's all on Tom. <laughs> where where no, can we see the The writer, films? director. Uh, on Facebook right now. Uh, well, the, congratulations. The hey, Mighty Beyond you. web series. Awesome. Um, Ted, the question I had for you was, what was it like doing Happy Days and F Hope and Faith? Oh, oh interesting. Uh, uh, Happy Days was my very first uh, professional acting job. In fact, it was my first acting job. Uh, I had never, I, w I got the show, I, I had no training. Uh, I didn't deserve to be on the show, uh, but Gary Marshall is a guy who is always looking for sort of types. And I happened to fit sort of this straight Yaley guy that they wanted opposite the Fonz and uh, to live with the Cunninghams. And so I, uh, I got the job. I'd, I'd signed a deal with ABC where it was sort of a talent scout. And uh, so they were going to save me for a year and send me into classes and all this stuff. And I ended up getting Happy Days right away. And so my real class was the cast of Happy Days and learning from some of the greatest actors in that genre ever. And uh, it was spectacular. So I had about four and a half seasons or so to learn from them. It was magical. But I, most of that, I was scared the entire time. I spend most of my time on every set just being scared. Uh, but I... I uh, I was really stiff and rigid as a character, and that's because I was really stiff and rigid. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. Uh, so that was a great experience. And then to do Hope and Faith was an amazing experience for me, one of my favorites, because I had Say So, finally, and I really had, uh, I, I got to have a lot of input there. Uh, Kelly Ripa, one of my good buddies, Faith Ford, one of my good buddies, uh, we just hit it off. And I was, if you're doing a show on the air in New York City, it's a home run. Like, the, wherever you want to go, wherever you want to have dinner, whatever show you want to see, boom, it's done. So it was, it was magic. The hard part of that show was I flew home every weekend to L.A. for a day and a half and flew back. Uh, and that was... That was hard. My wife was, you know, like, here, take them. And, uh, <laughs> uh, she'd, you know, she had enough. And then it looked, you know, uh, and then I would, I was just so tired that I was tired all the time. And, and then, uh, but I will say that that was, we had talked about at one point me, they asked me if I wanted to put my hat in the ring to, um, you know, take, go in with Kelly on after Regis left. And, mm. and I just couldn't. We just couldn't move, and it was too much. So, but I did that show a few times and thought, oh, this is nice. I like this, but it just wouldn't work. Thank you very much. It's an honor to meet both of you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much, much, brother. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Great question. Great question. Uh, now, you, you were talking about um, how you guys kind of hit it off on hope and faith right away. Is that something that happens very often? Like, I'll ask both of you is this uh, when you get on and you immediately click with the cast, or is that something that's special that, you know, is a rarity. I hit it off with Amanda. I came in on a guest shot right. with it's Sam It's a wonderful Kinnison. life. You remember that episode mm. with Sam? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Jablonski, attaboy. Yeah. And that was magic. I mean, that whole episode was so much fun. But I really, uh, I just hit it off with Amanda. Like, we just had a lot to talk about. We had a lot in common. And, uh, so, and I wasn't even in that scene. Yeah. Well, not the scene. It was no, just I being... know. We had to endure you on set, but... <laughs> you know, but just hanging out, just hanging around. No, and Ted is so avable. I mean, he's just mm. such a good guy. He really is. So when it came along, you know, and the show was married with children, so Marcy was single. As you know, I got dumped. Mm. Whatever. Boo, Steve. Anyway, um, and you just couldn't ask for a better guy to come in midstream. He was a show jinx, though, because every show he'd been on prior to that, he tanked the show. <laughs> Happy days. After four years. Of Love boat. Yeah. Dynasty. But who's, that? Who's, who's counting? Anyway. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, when a show is up and running, and we had been up and running for a few years, it's not an easy task to walk into. Yeah, that's and right. And you're 
quite good at it. Because you have to always be aware of stepping on someone's toes and, and making your viewpoint heard. Mm. So that's always, you know, trying to get your point across and also uh, people don't like change. Right. Especially something that's successful. So you have to find out how to, how to get in there and just sort of pick your moments. They made a great choice though, didn't but, they? They really well, did, they no, really did. We, I love working with Amanda and she was, I mean, she, you know, I mean, she has the second best character in the show, in my opinion. Yeah. Right? No, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm going to come to you next. I'm going to come to you right next. next. To I dog. promised you, so come on over. Uh, next to Buck. You want to be the antagonist. You want to be the antagonist. Buck was great. Here you go, my friend. All right. Hi, stranger. Hello again. <laughs> so who are your favorite adult performers to work with on the show, since there are so many? I'm sorry, <laughs> guest, uh, guest performers? Is there... Adult performers. Like. Oh, the porn... You know what? Porn and Playboy, yes. Actually, I have to say. I had so many, I can't remember. <laughs> had being, no. Tracy Lords was adorable. Mm. Yes. She was so dear. And she had just started working outside of that milieu. And, and uh, so obviously, it's kind of nerve wracking. Who else, and, by the way? Who else did we have? Uh, well, I don't think Pamela Anderson counts. She had a sex tape, right? But. Uh, as close as but you this get. was before she became Pamela Anderson, and then there was oh, yeah. Jessica Hahn, but I don't think she really counts. So you have to throw out some names. They may have been. Shannon I think your pardon. Tweed. Shannon Tweed was she? Tina she Carrere. What? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think they were adult film actors. No, especially not Tia Carrere. Yeah, and I don't think and, I've seen that one. Shannon, I haven't seen that one. You, know, <laughs> um, you mean adults in film? Yes, he does. <laughs> or porn? Adult. No, I'm talking. <laughs> no, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, some true. of them didn't have speaking roles, and so we didn't necessarily have that much opportunity to really um, yeah. work with them. And um, Lord knows, I wasn't probably uh, in those scenes. We did. <laughs> I'm just we, saying. we did. There's a there's a title sequence where Al and I are standing at a we're sitting at the bar table, and I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one where the they go and the legs go up like this, or maybe they start with the legs and you come down and you see the two of us with our beers and we cheers. <laughs> well, I don't know if that if she didn't know she was going up on the table, or with our producers, you never knew if if they were going to give us a little surprise, and so oh uh, my, at one point. We cheers, and we're supposed to look up, and we looked up, and uh, you know there was nothing there. A big reveal. <laughs> a big reveal. As we say in the business. And so that's when I kept thinking, I'm signing on for season 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just oh, one second. Yeah. Come on right. up. You came over. Come on. I don't like to tell that story in mixed company, sorry, but uh, great shirt. True. Great shirt. That was a um, genuine smile. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So I guess I wanted to kind of speak to the fact that the show was seen as inappropriate, as yes. you said, and, and how it would probably <laughs> Absolutely. not get Absolutely. And I said, oh, you've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> you've um, seen it. <laughs> I mentioned to Amanda that my sister and I used to stay up, and we'd, like, we weren't allowed to watch it, but we did. Um, <laughs> and I, I wonder if it was, because a lot of it is satirical, and a lot of it's very tongue-in-cheek and poking fun at pretty much anybody like yes. there's nobody that go comes in on on you know made fun of sort of thing and I wonder if it, it I wonder if people realize the fan base understood that or I mean do you think because all in the family had a similar sort of idea where it was meant to be making fun of one group and then you know, some people didn't get the joke. So do you think that the, the audience was intelligent enough to realize that it was satirical and that you know a lot of it was just sort of poking Hopefully. fun at stereotypes. <laughs> uh, you know, great and question. I've said this to many of you, it, it, what a great job to be able to come to work every day to try to make people laugh. Mm. And that's what Married with Children at its core was all about. And it had no socially redeeming value whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, uh. okay then. <laughs> all right then. Uh, but, you know, I think our fans are remarkable you are you really are and I'm not just saying that because I'm in front of a, a bunch of them right now but you kept us on the air there was no such thing as Fox when I started the show and I remember Katie's and my first promotional tour were, were at malls to, to, to say can you find your Fox channel 
because it was syndicated and it was on channels like 22, 44, things like that. And over time, it is you all. It is the fan base that makes a show. And we just have the privilege of getting to play every day. And so I think, you know, some things went over probably your head, hopefully, uh, when you were watching. And then I've also spoken <laughs> yeah. with you all that you come back and you watch it with adult lenses. And it's, oh my, this is a totally different show. <laughs> wow. Um, go, I, go I would say is, you know, the truth is that you, you throw these things out there and the audience takes from the shows what they want to take from what they see or what they don't see and and uh you know there is a group of people who who definitely see uh nothing but issues with the show there's a group like the late terry recall the lady who protested the show in the first place yeah. <laughs> Fine. Oh, well, now we don't need you. Thank you. Save it. Save it. But we'll, she, we'll act like we so didn't So she was protesting that. the show. She was trying to get America behind it to... to don't expound on his question. Oh, well, okay, we'll save. save it. Yeah. So, but the point was to avoid the show, and, and all the people were like, well, what show? Now I'm going to find my Fox channel. Right. And so she was the one who pointed everybody to the show, and that was season three. I think it was. The other thing that's remarkable about Mary that was made it sort of unique, especially in terms of advertising, is that men watched it. Mm. Because typically back in that day, and still to, you know, true to some degree, men watch sports and news, not as much entertainment television. You know, this was 19, this was the mid 80s. And they really responded to the show, you guys. I don't know if it was Christina Applegate, yeah, usually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, no, it didn't or, hurt. Or, yeah. you know, just the joy factor. But we had some major sponsors with Budweiser, and for whom Bud was named. And, and again, that's because of the audience, the demographic that it was reaching, which was kind of unusual. Yeah. <laughs> Seven-year-old, yeah. right, right. So oh, you were drinking question. a lot of beer then. All right, so no yeah. ma'am, you come up. Batman, I got you next. And well, I, I can't remember after that. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> All you, my friend. Okay, um, to the point about whether it could be made in 2019, um, Ted, you mentioned that uh, you can't really get away with as much yeah. live action, but animation, anything goes. Right. If, if David Faustino is working on trying to get this moving sometimes, has anyone suggested trying to do it as an animated version to... Huh? To be I have wow. no idea. No, but wow. that's a good pitch. That's you should pitch. make a phone call. Call Netflix. Producer. Help me call Netflix. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the Great truth. Question. I was saying that in animated, you can get away with way more. South today. Park. And, and that that is actually a, a good idea. And David does a lot of voice for animation, mm -hmm. uh, so that that could work for sure. Great. Great question. Call or uh, you know get a hold of Michael Moya if you. Facebook or whatever. And yeah, he's the other creator producer, and um, he's the living one. How yeah. close? How close were you guys to getting divorced with children happening? Like, weren't they? Because I know David was talking about doing a, not a spinoff, yeah. but a, an well, it was one. kind of the Bud Show. I right, mean, right, the Bud it, Show, and it yeah, was going to be was, based on him divorced with children, wasn't it? I think. No, I thought it was or? married with grandchildren, more like it, because David Faustino is a little older than Ed <laughs> O'Neill was when we started <laughs> the show, hmm. so it would have been a great reboot for David, and I wish for that for him. Mm -hmm. But I think because of Ron's estate is rather legally yeah. complex. Is what I heard. Yeah. That it kind of it got stuck in the mud. It's got mm. mired in that. That's not to say that it could get unstuck, but I think your idea is actually really yeah. tremendous. Great idea. Cash in, dude. Everybody in here who heard that, remember, it's his idea, not any of yeah. yours. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, no we man. had Batman next, and then uh, yeah, 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 I'll figure it. <laughs> there you go, Batman. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, I, was, I actually was worried because I thought he was going to steal my question. It's like it kind of on the similar lines of uh, Married with Children, like you said, came out of the 80s where it was like a, a lot of wholesome stuff and then you guys were a response to that. And now weirdly, we've the sitcoms are kind of moved back to that wholesome stuff. Do you think there's going to be a response to that and what do you think is going to happen uh, based on that? Based on that, we've kind of weirdly moved back to this... Like everything's so thing where everything's Media taboo. is so changed, question, and question. there's so much out there now that I think there are shows 
that um, are satirical in that way. Uh, a show exactly like Married with Children would not be made today. No, but if we did, you'd watch it, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I want to speak to, who mentioned uh, All in the Family? Somebody? Okay, hey, uh, because that was uh, Norman Lear's company, Embassy Television, and Married with Children, when it was originally uh, produced, was an embassy show. It was his final show. He oh, had wow. since retired from the company, but that's why it kind of has that texture. It has that flat, in-your-face kind of look to it, and um, that was sort of uh, marked, you know, stamped by um, uh, Norman Lear, and yet... All in the Family was very political. Mm -hmm. And it really spoke to, we could use an All in the Family, I think. Because <laughs> um, it spoke to issues, um, actually there's a lot of them still here yeah. with us. Uh, and Mary with Children was, was created in response to these happy, nice family shows. And the original title was not The Cosbys. <laughs> really? <laughs> And who knew how that was going to turn out? Right. <laughs> anyway. I, I hope that we go back. I think you're right that things go in cycles, but there is sort of a larger consciousness now that, that hasn't existed for in my lifetime, I think. Uh, so I don't know, but I know for comedy, and, and I know that you know, sort of the arts in general, it really is supposed to be sort of a mirror of life. It's not supposed to, it's just a representation of sometimes just a faction of life. And that I think that that's fair, that you should be able to show that side. The problem is if it becomes so popular, then that becomes sort of the norm. So you have, it's a little bit dangerous, but I do think that uh, it, it, we're so politically correct that, I mean, I'm so Not glad. Not in the White House, so don't get me started there. <laughs> we have a show on the news every night. Right. I would not want to be a stand-up today. No. That's the one thing you do hear from a lot of stand-up comedians, especially like the college tour, they, yeah. which was any comedian's bread and butter back yep. in our time, you know, and now that's the one place they can't go well, anymore. Well, because it's a little too real. Yeah. Well, and you know, you always want to push the envelope. Yeah, exactly. And, and now you, pretty soon, now you just get eaten by it. So you, you, it's just not worth it. Well, anymore. we can get into this discourse, but sometimes the pendulum does have to swing in one direction. Exactly. But I do agree <clears throat> that there is a place that it can fall in between. Yeah. But we've just got a lot of healing to do. Yeah. And, um, and it is, it's in our face. That's why I say, I want to stay in this country. Anybody want to sponsor me? Yeah, yeah. You stay in my place. We got to be Awesome. <laughs> I'll sponsor All right. her. All right, um, wait, I had Nirvana first, I remember that. Um, and then I'm going to come to you, then to you, and then I'll be on your way, okay? And then I'm coming to that side of the room, and the guy with the rat GTV hat can wait. <laughs> come on up, sir. For you, sir. Hi, Ted. I love this shirt. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, question was, what did Frank Sinatra think about his song being used, and was he a fan of the show? And second was, Sam Kinison, I think he did a couple of shows. Was he fun to work with? Was it like a party with him around, or was he very professional? I can't see him being very professional. That was a crazy week. First of all, I have no idea about Frank, but I'm sure he didn't mind because he got a ton of money every time it played. Yeah. So, you know. Michael, right? Yes, Michael. Yeah. Um, but Sam, the week Sam was there was really interesting. He was uh, not in a real healthy place in his life, which ended up getting better, and then tragically he didn't live that long. Um, you want to tell the story of that week? Yeah, I was telling it, and we just had beers with Ted, and I was telling the story, but uh, so I had known Sam because we were in a comedy improv uh, class for a while, group, uh, so I, I, we got along great, and showed up together, was like, oh, really, you're doing this, you're doing this? Uh, and so Monday we did table read because the week starts with we all sit around with our scripts We read it and then the writers will rewrite what doesn't work and you come in Tuesday and we begin to block it So the director Amanda will then say hey, why don't you come in over here? And we sort of roughly go through it with new words So Monday Sam killed it as only Sam can he was one of a kind and Everybody's like this is gonna be amazing <laughs> Tuesday Sam no shows. Yeah Where's Sam? No word, no nothing. All of a sudden, he doesn't show up. So it comes to us that he's having emergency root canal issues and that they're going to go in and 
He's at the dentist. That's why he can't make it. I didn't hear that. Yeah. So Wednesday, he comes in. We're going to do a run through now for the writers. We're going to rehearse and then we run through. Sam shows up and at lunchtime, to make up for it, he has a lunch catered by Chasen's, which was a very fancy restaurant in LA, served by strippers. <laughs> it, was, no, no, it was belly dancers. Belly dancers. Belly dancers. And they put on a show. And then we also got gifted because his bodyguard was an ex cop. Yeah. So we got these bully sticks. I still as, have it. I still have a, it under my bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I use it as my window block. Yeah, I use it to hit anyway. people with. <laughs> uh, of course you do. And then the next day, he had, he had a huge boom box this big, and he had his new album that hadn't been released yet. And so he had lunch catered again and put on his album. And I remember laughing through lunch. And that was a great episode. I mean, that was so much fun. That was... And a pretty classic episode, too. That and quintessential really, uh, that, and, Sam. And, yeah. yeah. But also, our Christmas episodes were, were rather infamous, starting mm. with Santa falling to his death on <laughs> our first Christmas together. But that, I think that was a m- remarkably yeah. written show as well. Yes, and I And that agree. was your first show. That's right. And that's Mr. when Pretty. I remember thinking, <laughs> like about the second day of, you know, strippers serving you lunch, I thought, now what's the show again? <laughs> How do you get on the show? I mean, I'd never heard of oh, anything like right. that. It when was you crazy. Saw it, you were guesting. I didn't, I didn't even oh, watch the show right. before that. Okay. I had never, I couldn't find my Fox channel. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then all of a sudden. You weren't at the right mall. Yeah. But there, tell them the story about, so it's the one where Santa Claus falls and then you see Katie Seagal and you see them all turn up No, it's Ed. Away it's from the camera. It's Ed when he can, turns back. And you can see back. that, though, at home. Mm-hmm. Now, it oh, made the air. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we turn and we watch the dummy drop. And then it's funny. And then we turn back a slow burn. And Ed is giggling and trying to swallow it so badly. Yeah. No, it, he was the one who broke. And so he turned, but he turned upstairs. You see him turn away from the camera. Well, we and all you can did. see everyone doing yes, this yeah, in the yeah, background. Yeah. And it actually aired. I mean, the, but every time a body dropped, somebody would do that in a scene. It just, there's something about that dummy falling yes. that was funny. Yes. And, and to us. And then it became, and then once one person went, it was done. You, it was always, so every time you see that, you'll see somebody turn up stage uh-huh. away from the camera. <laughs> yeah. Start convulsing. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Great question. Great question. So I've got you and I've got you. And then I got we're, you, babe. Yeah, we're we're getting a little uh, low on time, so uh, let's. Uh, what we got a backup group coming in? Is that it? Oh well, hey then. Is there still anybody else? I say we stay as long as Amanda Whatever. says we stay. By the you know, way, this she's is bossy. my first panel ever. I've never She's done doing one of these. very well. I'm giving you my virginity. Yeah. Thank you. TMI. <laughs> yeah. TMI. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, uh, I think you kind of answered it, but I'll try anyway. Uh, other than the moments with the dummy that made you guys crack up, were there any other memorable bloopers or outtakes or uh, crack ups on the series where no matter how hard you tried, you just couldn't keep a straight face and you were like laughing for hours on end? Well, there was one that pre-existed Ted and that was the cabin scene where all the women get their cycle at the oh, same yeah, time. And actually that was supposed to launch, I think season three and the network got cold feet because we can show guns and violence and nudie bars, but women can't have their period. Anyway, <laughs> don't get me started. But Katie and it was funny and the bears are circling and, yeah. and um, Katie and Chrissy and I were in sleeping bags on the floor is what I remember. And we had several lines in sequence and we just got those giggles the ones you're not supposed to have so badly. And I think we had to start over maybe four or five times before we could do it with a straight face. But it's so much fun when that happens. Yes, that's I magic. do remember that one. Yeah. Really and by the way, when that happens and you have a live audience, the audience then becomes a part of it, right? So, right. so many times when you're doing a show in a live audience, the audience is privy to things that, they don't, that won't make it to the air. So they are a part of the game, and that becomes part of the magic in that one moment that only happens for that audience. 
So you're really writing for everybody at home, you're making the show for everybody at home, but that experience in that evening is always magical. And, and so then you see the audience will start to giggle. As soon as somebody even cracks, it goes immediately again and it just continues on. And speaking of, our audiences, like you all, uh, were alive. Yeah. And they were a living, Element. They were a character in the show. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know this because Al would come in and it would be like, okay, okay, can we start talking? Because yeah. the audience would because scream you're and yell. Screaming and, yeah. and cheering and so forth. And if he came in with an attitude, yeah. immediately they knew the audience was gonna it was gonna be a one minute laugh, you know, right. whatever it was. But it was it was such a delightful experience so as a performer, and you do have to time laughs so that you don't walk into them and nobody can hear what you're supposed to be saying, right? Yeah. But it was so intense on that set. Yes. Yeah. No. And I do remember, okay. And we also started the metal detectors on that set. <laughs> Did we really? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you see the guys coming through the gates initially and they'd say, do you have anything in your pocket? It'd be chains and knives and everything. <laughs> and then finally we just had to get metal detectors because, and by the end, they'd be giving back the stuff with boxes full of chains and knives. It was a crazy... I Wild remember there were audience. a lot of Marines that came for I guess remember, who. I remember a lot of bikers, <laughs> yeah, for Kelly. Yes, yeah. and you're introduced as a cast at the top of the show, okay? So before we start rolling camera, they bring, you know, there's a stand-up comedian who warms the audience, kind of like, and and then we, we are ready to start the show, and from, it's a billing issue, you know, so the top billing is, is, is uh, Ed O'Neill, and we march up. For some reason, and I probably had to do with age, I was third billing after David left. So it was Ed, Katie, me, Chrissy, David Faustino. But you go in reverse order, right? So every time an actor comes out and the audience goes, so I was having to follow Christina Applegate. <laughs> so when Christina Applegate would come out, it would just be insane. <laughs> and then... <laughs> so it didn't take me long to say, you know what, Chrissy, I think you need to follow uh, me. Uh, it's because I started every show with like this less than. Uh, uh, no, but understandable. Yeah. Is that is that a missing element in today's sitcoms, the live studio audience? There's still some. Yeah, but it's uh, it's few and far between it seems. We yeah, well, there's not track, a lot of multi-camera. Right? Okay. So that's that's traditional where a show is shot in a proscenium, mm -hmm. like a stage, and you have the camera aisle with the 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 four cameras shooting, and there are less and less being made. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, and, and that's Hollywood, and that pendulum also changes, it shifts, so it depends on which season some multi-cameras will start to come back. Uh, uh, Grace I've and Frankie is multi-cam, Big Bang was, Mom is. No Good Nick, the show I'm doing right now no. on Netflix, is, no. a, is a live audience. Oh, way to uh, plug. Yes. Ooh, well done. <laughs> I don't first, believe this is your first panel. First 10 seasons are out right now, next 10 coming. <laughs> uh, but it's nothing like the, it's kind of a family deal. But uh, I, I think they're fun. They, they make it a lot of fun, but it does take much longer and you can't make changes on the fly right. as easy. Um, but it is, it's magic. I mean, right. It's like doing a little play every week. Right. Yeah. But they're just, exactly. it, when I first started on Happy Days, they didn't have, it was all film in the camera. Today, it's chips in the camera. But when it was film, there was no monitor for the director. Like Amanda would not be in the booth watching it. Like a married, Amanda directed many of most of them. She would be in a booth watching a screen. She'd be multiple screens. You see all the cameras on there. But when we were doing uh, Happy Days, for example, there was no monitor right. for the, so the director had to take it from the cameraman. Did you get that? Did you see that? Oh, there Did wasn't you catch a quad it? split on that set? No. Wow, this is before that's that. No switches no, or anything. No, they didn't even have it then. So he had to take the word of the director. So you look great for 82. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Doesn't he? Wow. The chemistry still No, it was still so there. much fun though Thank because you, our sir. booth, and this isn't done, now directors are on the set. And yeah. they do go from a quad split, so you have the four cameras that you're looking at in a big television monitor. But back in the day when you would do multi-cam, uh, on a soundstage, they would build a booth that overlooked the audience. You really couldn't see much of the action on the stage. But it was a wall, and you've seen this when they go like in award shows and they'll go into the booth and see the director and yeah. all the people lined up there. You've, 
you're now inside Hollywood, it's not a big mystery. But I would have so much fun because I'd be there snapping for the shots and, and, uh, and with, with the, uh, the crew and then I'd have to go on. Yeah, right. And our booth was up high and it was like and then circle around the stage and get on yeah. in time. Yeah. That was great. Loved it. <laughs> what a well, rush. Almost every entrance we had was through that front, well, it was through the front door. And so you'd have to sit there and wait and wait and then finally make your entrance. And that was, I, you know, after a while, recently I've been doing this on a show and I, keep, I still can't stand sitting out there waiting. Flashbacks. I like to just get in there right away. Well, let me apologize for making you wait out there yeah. before you guys came on. <laughs> no, this was a good entrance. <laughs> All right, uh, so I had one over here. Um, I promised you earlier, I will try to get to you. I know I promised you back there too, so. Come on down. All the way Lovely dress. The from is. Germany. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. And came for us. From, Have you met her from the Netherlands? No. From the Netherlands. Oh, uh, the Netherlands. Wait, yes. you went from Netherlands to Berlin then. She thinks they're the yeah. same. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get out much. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, Ask something. If you could uh, choose the uh, character, how it would end? For example, Marcy, Jefferson. How do you want it to end? I'd marry Sorry a much sense. younger woman. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like four of them. I'm just saying. You're asking Jefferson, right? Not, One of those not, not Jefferson. Ted McGinley. Jefferson. Oh, Ted really? McGinley would never oh, say oh. that. Well, I, actually, you know, I think we pitched maybe softly yeah. an idea to spin off Marcy and Jefferson in the witness protection program oh, oh. <laughs> so that you would know they were Marcy and Jefferson. Do you remember this? No. And, but, you, you know, the audience would know, oh, that's Marcy and Jefferson, but they're playing other characters and then we'd get found. You don't that's, remember this? No, well, but Obviously, I like they it. didn't pick that up. Uh, but... You know, speaking to that, we did not get a finale. So yeah. I would have given us a finale. The production company was ready for the show to end, but was not ready to announce. Yes. At the at the end of that season. But so, the audience didn't get the finale. We owed no, it to the audience right, I agree. at that yeah. point to have oh, a yeah, great no, ending. Oh yeah, not about us, yeah. but for the sort of the end. And I I think we should have gone up in smoke, in some, you know, yeah. I think we should have ended with a... I wanted to do that, yeah. Some yeah. giant explosion. <laughs> yeah, now it's a totally little too, agree with that. too yeah. real. Again, it would be really inappropriate, yeah. but, you know, yeah. Yeah, sort of a Jim Jones. You guys were looking for the Thanos snap, were you? You know. Oh, yeah, I'm dark. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm very dark. Question. I don't look it, but I'm very dark. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, great question. Come on over in the red shirt there. For you, my friend. First off, I just want to say growing up in the 90s was awesome because the TV show that you guys produced was like so awesome and hilarious. Thank you. My only question is, what's your favorite episode? Oh, wow. Good question. Wow. Good question. Wow. It is hard. It is hard to say. I, and I've said this to a few of you all, I think. I really loved the Jerry Springer episode. Yes. Where you guys were all in the audience and Ed had taken over the show and Jerry was tied up in his chair <laughs> yeah. and then Marcy rushes the stage and, you know, has at it with Al. So that was a lot of fun. And then also a lot of the ones that I directed were, were, were especially memorable for me. And, um, yeah, so... Oh, I know another one. I don't know if you were there yet, but we did a show in what's called real time. And it oh, was, yeah. yeah, it was an earlier, were you there yet? No. An earlier episode where it was shot in the half hour of the Bundy's life. And they're trying to get out the door to go to a diner that was nostalgic, that was closing its doors at a certain time. And things just kept happening and they couldn't. So to do a show live in almost two acts, you, so you really have these long stretches of a scene. Yeah. That was especially fun as an actor. Yeah, that would be challenging. I think for me, anytime, anytime Ed and I were building something uh, was fun. 
and I love the one where we're putting the satellite dish on the roof. Yes. That's probably my favorite. I love. Uh, I did direct that one, you know. I think, and you guys, oh, so many bodies fell off that roof. Yeah, that, that yeah. was so much yeah. fun. <laughs> so many dummies. Also, I liked the pirate episode. I thought that was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Cabin boy girl. Yeah. Cabin yeah. boy girl. <laughs> she opened her, I will prove it to you. She opened her shirt and he's like, how? Yeah. Yeah. I still love that. Awesome. That was a good one. Yeah. Because David Garrison was back and it was, that was always fun to have him rejoin us. Yes, that the was cast, fun. So. Uh, that, great question. Uh, here you go, my friend. Hi. Uh, just wanted to say I've loved your show since day one. Uh, my yeah. father and I used to watch it all the time when I was little. He introduced me to it when I was maybe seven or eight. So, wow, Dad. Yeah, I'm one of those people Happy that literally grew up on it. Well, and awesome, Dad. I, I love it because it <laughs> gave me cool. my sense of humor. It taught me what was funny and what was not. But the question I got to know is, what was it like having Robert England on the show? Oh, wow. He's I'm a lovely literally guy. the biggest Freddy freak on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> literally. He's a very <laughs> gracious guy. I, I've actually seen Robert at a few of these conventions. And, you know, his line's all, uh, all the way down the block, always. Yeah. No, he's no, not that not kind like of that. dude. He's not. No, he's actually more of a Shakespearean type trained actor. So uh, he has a lot of grace. I'll always surprise you, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Interesting. Awesome. Okay, uh, got you here. Nice hat, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. <laughs> I want to first thank you guys for both uh, providing us with, I think, what is the greatest sitcom ever Thanks. still today. Uh, as much as I love the Steve episodes, Jefferson, I, I think, is when the show really, uh, really made it for me, especially, uh, you know, the dynamic between Al, actually, you guys being coming buddies and the whole no man thing, I think, was really great. Thank uh, you. I got a question for Amanda, and if you can't answer it, maybe we'll give half of it to Ted. I want to ask you if you remember either of your husband's middle names. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. Bartholomew? Yes. yes. Was Steve? Yes. And uh, I, do you remember? No. Oh, no. <laughs> he had a, enough of a first name. Jefferson. Oh. I, I don't. That's a great question. Jefferson Darcy Darcy? Millhouse. Millhouse, Millhouse oh. Darcy. Nixon. Everything's coming <laughs> up Millhouse. All right. Wow. All right. Good question. How amazing was that? That guy's got some good questions. Oh, Someone great. should buy a hat from that guy. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. Oh. Go ahead. Well, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm sure there's some more questions. There. I do have one question for you. There was a rumor I remember hearing when I, when I was younger, and actually Steve and I were talking about it earlier. There was a rumor that Al and Peggy were almost played by two different characters, and we mentioned one of them earlier, Sam Kinison as Al and Roseanne Barr as Peggy. Right. That is true? I've heard that. Um, I, I recall conversations about Sam. I'm not so sure about Roseanne. That show came right, along. a long time after. Yeah, well, no, not too long, but stole a lot of our show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> it was a morality play where we were, we had no morals. Right. Whatsoever. But um, we also, for the pilot, we recast the kids. Oh. So we actually shot the pilot in December of 1986. And the network, the brand new network. Yeah. But it was a Columbia Pictures Television, Embassy Television, so very seasoned people were looking at it, and they decided to recast both the kids, and we really lucked out. Mm -hmm. uh, because David was very young, but grew to be so fine. Um, and Christina arrived with just so much talent. And if you haven't already, watch her new series, Dead to Me. Dead to Me, oh, So God. good. I was saying there's a lot of Christina in that show. If you want to get an insight to Christina, there's so much of her in that show. It's a great show. Amazing. And the, the thing about kids on a set, too, it has everything to do with their parents. Hmm. And, um, and both of their moms were really, truly great people. And, you know, this was a tacky show. This was not a a real appropriate show, yeah. but um, you know they just did it right, and yeah. that's not always the case. Yeah, yeah. He's just saying, well, thank you all so much. Yes. So, has everybody had a good time here? Has everybody been entertained? All right. How about we all rise and give these folks the respect no, no, they no. deserve? Come on. Woo!